We finally get to see Nicolas Cage playing Dracula, so it's time to answer the question that is on everybody's minds. Does this movie suck? Little vampire joke for ya. What's up guys, I'm Sully, and today I'm super excited because we finally get to talk about this new horror comedy, Renfield. All you need to know about this one is that the story goes like this. Renfield, the tortured aide to his narcissistic boss, Dracula, is forced to procure his master's prey and do his every bidding. However, after centuries of servitude, he's ready to see if there's a life outside the shadow of the Prince of Darkness. Now I gotta start this off by saying I love Nicolas Cage. I absolutely love the guy. If you've hung around the channel before, you already know that, but whether he's off stealing the Declaration of Independence or fighting off animatronics at a Chuck E. Cheese, I'm here for all of it. You tell me he's in a movie and I am seated. And I feel like it was only a matter of time before we saw him take on a legendary role like Dracula. It's just the perfect type of role where you know he's gonna strut his stuff and it fits so well with the level of crazy that he's gonna bring to the table. I heard for months before production even started, he was walking around his house with fake fangs in his mouth to get the voice perfectly. So you know he came to play. One of the things this movie has going for it is that it definitely delivers on what it sets out to deliver. Deliver. Everything you saw in the trailer is in here, the over-the-top action scenes, the buckets of blood and gore, the funny one-liners. I don't think this movie gives you anything that you're not expecting, but it definitely gives you what you are. It's not going to surprise you, but that's totally fine by me. As a big-time movie guy, I love sitting down at the theater and getting exactly what I think I'm going to get out of a film, and I punched my ticket for this one expecting an ultra-gory, over-stylized, comedic spin on a vampire tale, and that's exactly what they threw at my eyeballs. I think you just have to give this movie props for taking such big swings for the fence creatively with its story. It's taking the dynamic of a vampire and his servant, thrusting it into the modern era, and making that servant realize, hey, 2023 is the year of empowerment. I don't need to listen to this prick tell me what to do all the time. And he starts sticking up for himself. It's as wacky on paper as it is on screen, and it never comes off as forced or preachy, which is a big win. Now, the other big draw of this film is obviously the action. And I was happy to see that it was always filmed in a really fun way in this movie, and it incorporated a ton of gore into those sequences to great effect. You got heads exploding, arms getting ripped off, and people getting turned into human pinata basically. This is the type of movie that knows what they need to do to get an audible reaction from the crowd, and my audience was hooting and hollering during every single fight scene. If mutilation and gallons of fake blood aren't your thing, you probably won't like this very much, but if you're a sick puppy like me, you'll be applauding the whole way through. We need to start talking about this cast here because I thought they were very solid from front to back. Obviously, Holt and Cage are the stars of the show, everybody knows it, the entire movie is centered around their relationship, and the banter they have back and forth is incredible throughout the movie, but I thought the secondary characters here did a really nice job rounding this whole thing out. Aquafina's pretty funny in this movie. I don't usually enjoy her, but she kind of won me over in this film. And then Ben Schwartz is great as he always is. I'm a big fan of his. Does he kind of play a street level gangster version of the character he always plays? I mean, yes, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. There's a reason he's famous for playing these types of characters. Now, in a world where I feel like I'm always saying movies are getting a little bit too long and everything seems like it's over two and a half hours, I actually think I'm gonna say the opposite here with Renfield. This thing is 90 minutes, the story travels at breakneck speed, and I wish we had another 15 extra minutes here to spend with these characters. Luckily, Nicholas Holt plays such a lovable and friendly guy that we get attached to him from the very start. But seriously, it's like if Buddy the Elf was a vampire. I just wish this movie would take some time to slow down and smell the roses a bit more often to give it some time to breathe, because I thought some of the best parts of this film were when his character went to a support group to seek out how best to get out of a toxic relationship, and that was really some of the only non-actiony bits of the entire 90 minutes. It just went by so fast and felt a little bit rushed that even though I liked everything I saw on screen, I had a little bit of a uh, that's it moment when the credits started to roll. But like I said earlier, if you liked the trailers for this movie, you'll probably have a fun time with this one because it pretty much delivers on everything it promises. You've got your gore, you've got your laughs, you've got your yearly dose of our Lord and Savior, Nicolas Cage. It all makes for a fun but fleeting experience at the movies. The 90 minute runtime absolutely hustles right on by, a little too fast for its own good, and I just wish there was a touch more for me to sink my teeth into. Had to get one last vampire pun in there, come on. Renfield gets a Sully score of three and a half stars. So that's my review for the new vampire movie. I need to see Nick Cage play all of the universal monsters. I'll be first in line for his Wolfman. But let me know in the comments below if you're gonna go check this one out or if you've already seen it. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you guys at the next one.